Hey guys, Andy here. One of my Christmas presents this year was a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, which you see here. This is kind of the starter kit. I think it's from Amazon for about £40. The biggest box is just the power. It's actually powered via micro USB, as you'll see, um, but it goes obviously in the uh, UK mains. You do get an adapter, I think, for Europe. The other sort of bag is the case for the Raspberry Pi, because Raspberry Pi itself, you'll see in a moment, really just a kind of a little board. So you need a box for it to go into. You can buy just a board and then do your own stuff, but th with the starter kit, you get the box. So if we have a look inside, that's where the, the board will go. It all fits together quite nicely. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put the little rubber feet on it. So. If I'm honest, I'm not entirely sure what I want the Raspberry Pi for. Um, I'd heard about how you can kind of run Python programs on it, and, and I want to learn Python this year, so I thought, well, it's probably not a bad a bad idea. Um, some of the specs that we're looking at here, it's got a 4 times ARM Cortex-A53 running 1.2 gigahertz uh, CPU. Um, it's got a Broadcom Video Core 4 GPU. It's got 1 gig of RAM at 900 megahertz. It's got, it does have uh, Wi-Fi, it does have Bluetooth 4.1, it has obviously a micro SD card slot as you've seen, oh, well you've seen the micro SD card, put it that way, um, it has a GP1040 pin header, it also has um, camera serial interface and display serial interface, I'm not actually sure what those two things are but I guess that's for plugging in either display or for cameras, you would, you would assume. We also, as you might have seen, have been spinning around an HDMI slot, four USB ports, and an audio video jack on the side there. So it's all installed and in place. So now I've just got to find all the bits that I need to plug into it. So I've got the keyboard, I've got the mouse, I've got power, I've got an HDMI cable up to my TV, I've got a network cable. So at first I thought, well, let's just let's just try to network first and see how see how it goes. In goes the HDMI, and then finally. I'm going to plug the micro USB in and hopefully it's all going to come to life. So you see some lights on the actual box. I don't know if you saw the uh, the mouse had lit up and we see the network cable flashing away. So all seems to be okay. I did later on find out that actually my HDMI cable was dodgy so at one point I lost all visual on the screen on my, on my TV. I thought I reformatted basically <laughs> and realized it was the cable that was wrong. So uh, first thing I see is choosing which operating systems you want to install. I actually went for two of them. Um, the sort of default, so to speak, and also the media center type. And it just sort of saying, you sure? You say, yes. It actually took a long, long time because I think I had to download at least one of them. It might have had the, the rasp Raspberryon or whatever it's called. While it's installing, it's telling you various different bits and pieces that you can do or where to go to find things out. And then eventually, I mean, I'm talking eventually, it was literally sort of 10 minutes, if not a bit longer, to install. So it said, okay, which one do you want to boot into? So I, mean, I should apologise as well. For that. I've not got any set, anything set up to record off the TV, so I am literally just pointing my camera up at it. Unfortunately, it's not the best of pictures. My apologies. So there we go. We've booted in. The first thing I noticed, it didn't actually fill the screen correctly. It sort of overflowed, but we will see that shortly. How I fix that um, into the sort of console. And I bring up the configuration. In advanced options, we have a resolution setting. So you go down to that. I think at this point I've gone for 720, but later on I went, you know what, well, I've cranked it up to 1080p, why not? So that's that set. I think it took a reboot, and then as you can see, it all fits a lot better. So there is some software already installed. Here's me kind of having a little bit of a play, writing some very simple Python code. Um, but it all seems quite good, you know. Obviously, I've got a nice keyboard plugged in, nice mouse. It all seems responsive enough. Um, the, the display now fitted into the <laughs> to the TV, so it all fits correctly. And as I said, a very simple bit of code. I've not entirely worked out, so I don't know how. So if I've written some Python code and I run it, I'm not entirely sure how I then actually make it kind of an an app that works on. Uh, on the Raspberry Pi, so I need to look into that one, but it does work though, at least, that's something. <laughs> then we're going to move on to, so this is just me sort of looking through the file structure as you would imagine with kind of a Windows PC, it's all 
pretty much the same drag and drop type stuff. I mean, it reminds me more of if, if I was using Linux, I suppose. I don't really know my way around. It's got some bits of software pre-installed. Uh, but then I thought, okay, well, let's try the OSMC. Now, I've tried Kodi. I, I get the impression it's a very similar thing to Kodi, and I've tried Kodi before, and I've just not understood how it works. Maybe someone in the comments can explain it. <laughs> or maybe it's a bit more complicated than that, but I get into OSMC, and I'm able to scroll through all these different things, and I, I just don't understand what I'm supposed to... When I go to videos, there's nothing there. I get the options to maybe install some other bits and pieces. It can do Kodi through it. I just couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. So I thought, you know what, let's go back. Let's... Let's, let's go back into regular Raspberry and or whatever it is. So I installed Chromium, which is basically the Chrome browser, and it didn't cope so well. I think this was TweetDeck, so I've got a variety of different sort of lists that show on uh, on this on this TweetDeck page, and it pretty much just ground the whole thing to a halt. I don't think you can quite see in the top corner, in the top right corner of the screen, there's like a percentage symbol of the CPU usage. And it was generally bouncing up around sort of 60 to 100. Um, and in fact, the mouse stopped responding after a little while. Um, and I kind of just gave up, which is a little, is a lot. So it seemed quite quick and smooth with everything else that I'd done. But maybe it's just Chromium. Maybe it's just this tweaked out page in particular because it had a lot to do. But yeah, in the end, I just pulled the power and and booted it back up again basically i've not to be fair i've not really tried chrome again since so as i say i'm not really sure what i'm going to do with it there's loads of great little projects you can find out on the internet that uh, none of them particularly ticked a box for me just yet so like i said i've got it here just to have a bit of a play with if i can work out how i can write my own programs to go on it using python then i should do that obviously but uh, yeah i just thought i'd show you a little bit about the raspberry pi i guess let me know any thoughts or comments down in the uh, comments underneath but for now my name's andy I'll catch you all again soon. Ah, you made it all the way to the end. Well done. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe by clicking the little fellow over on this side of the screen. You might also want to check out the other videos. It should be just there. Check out my website as well, androidandy.uk, made by me. I'm learning HTML and PHP, so hopefully it's uh, functional. But I'll see you again in the next video.